Here's an electric scooter. It's called Speed X Men and Cyberbot. And it looks like this. Okay, it has eight and a half inch tires. Eight and a half is mentioned here. Eight and a half times 3.0. It has disc brakes in the front and the other disc brake is on the other side. So we have two disc brakes. That's the rear one. Okay, so here we have the rear brake for that wheel, front brake for that wheel. It has a small computer here which turns off by itself after a while. It has a foil on it. You have to power it on by long pressing the top button. There are only two buttons. Ooh, it's ugly on the screen. Now it's more visible. I adjusted the shutter speed of the camera. So it has three speeds. The speeds are shown up here. If you press the M, now it's on the second speed, third speed, and back to the first one. Okay, down here we can see the battery is charged up. Although that is the distance meter, it's at zero kilometers. It has a bell there. It says holes there. So that's the mechanical brake for the rear. So it's using cables, not hydraulic. By the way, it has plastic covers and I'm losing them already. And they are held by some silicon. That's a bad glue for this plastic. I already lost that one. The length is not great. Two hands, so you have to put one of your feet back here, especially for the speed because it accelerates. It has two motors, one motor in the front, one in the back. 500 watts here, 500 watts there. And you can also turn on or off one of the motors. So when it is outside, then only the rear wheel is pulling. When it's pushed in, then both of the front and the rear are pulling. So in this way you have a thousand watts, in this way you have just 500 watts. Okay, so let's leave both of them connected. The top one, that is for the lamp, because there is no lamp down here, neither up there, but it has lamps here. So on the base plate, we have on both sides LEDs in the front and in the back. That's the back lamp, which is red. Okay, and that can be turned on only from here. So on the first one, it is on and off. On and off, only two positions. The front is on, the rear is on. And if I disconnect it, now only the brakes will activate the lamp. So when I'm pulling it, it's flashing. Release it, it's not doing anything. Pull it, it's flashing. So whenever you brake, that will always flash. And now it's constant. Now that's the power. Now it's constantly on. Now it's on, plus when you brake, it is flashing a little bit. Release it, it's not flashing. Pull it, it's flashing. It has coil springs in the back. They look like that. And it has another one in the front. Turn off that light, the top one. Dual suspension, dual motor, dual mechanical disc brakes. By the way, the size is not huge, so two legs won't fit in here. Well, the second one would go up there, so one leg should stay either like that or like that. It has a kickstand. A small leg, like so. So that's the lower side. It's completely flat here. Forty-eight volts. Cyberbot is mentioned here on the wheel. Eight point five by three point zero. Max load 75 kilograms, 165 lbs, 50 psi, 
340 kilo Pascal. So this is the front wheel and the rear wheel is identical 8.5 by 3 max load 75 kilograms the closing mechanism is holding both of the top and the bottom parts so you have to manually open that one like so and then you can fold it this portion is not foldable it turned off so by the way that's power ton it is always pulling so you don't need to push it both of them are spinning it has a little bit of wobble so there's the first speed push the M that's the second speed second speed goes to 42 kilometers per hour third speed It goes to 75 kilometers per hour so that's 75 of course there is no load on it the first one goes to 31 without any load you have to hold it and then it turns off it's pretty heavy 28 kilograms that's not a small weight you won't be carrying this easily by the way you can attach a a chain or something to secure it to this part there's a hole an opening there you have a screw here in the center the height is not adjustable on the handlebar this part cannot be attached to there so that you could carry it from this bar so you have to put one end there other somewhere there and then you might be able to carry it This is connecting the lower and the top parts. It's not too fast. These are the brakes. The right height is pretty good. So there is a lot of space here. Exactly in this position. That much. Let's see the width. Width is almost 18 centimeters. 17 and a half. The space here around 42 centimeters up there you have 60 the total length is about 114 centimeters it has a reflector there it's just glued there it's already moving this is plastic by the way it's held by four screws so don't step on this one but on that one this will break that's plastic it's pretty long i'm not sure if it's protecting you well enough in case of rain this is also plastic the battery of course it's inside here it's at 48 volts dc and at 19 amp hours i haven't seen anything mentioned about that one it has screws here on the side also and on the bottom those can get in the way if you jump off a sidewalk or something cable enters here there's the power these are hanging outside 48 volts is mentioned on the motor the motor is inside this part it's enclosed i'm not sure if it's waterproof or not that's the charging port it has one charger but if you have two chargers then you can connect both of them to charge the scooter faster so charging is on the left side and the lamp and the motor selector is on the other side on the right side here we can see the wiring inside the coil is visible there there is a screw on the bottom the wheels are inserted from the lower portion here's the gap where it was inserted same for this one on the lower side the acceleration is this one and it's gradual so it's not all or nothing you can go slower or you can go faster slower nothing you can vary the speed and it goes 
Oops. Oh shit. it has power. By the way, there is no handbrake so that it will not go off the hill. So you have to use that leg, that small kickstand. So one conclusion after riding it on straight roads, only the rear wheel is better because the acceleration is not that drastic. But when you have a hill, just one motor is not enough. So you will feel the lack of power. But with two wheels, it's perfect. So when you are going on straight roads, use it like so, that is when the rear motor is enabled and when you are going uphill, push that in and then the front and the rear are activated. By the way, as I see, plastic cap, no plastic cap, so I already lost that one. Besides that one, I lost two, so remove those and Either use a better glue than this silicon. Silicon is not good. It adheres to the metal but not to the plastic. Or just use them without these caps. There's no thread in it. So let's remove this foil. Oh, it's much better. With foil, without foil. And I went three kilometers. Second speed, third speed, back to one. Long press. I see a headlight sign there. Headlight is not on. Neither the rear one. Why is that there? Long press is off. So long pressing enables a light, but there is no light here. Auto, trip, and long press disables it. By the way, to the left. You can rotate the wheel that much, it won't go further, so that's not too much. But to the right it rotates a little bit more, till there. It's almost in parallel with the board. So that's to the right, and that's to the left. It's less to the left. And now the scooter is connected to the charger. And the charger is connected to an inverter, it transforms the 12 volts DC of the car battery to 220 volts AC to the charger. And I have a meter here, so it's consuming 0.5 amps, this one and that one. And when I plug it in to any of these, all I have is a red LED. So when it's unplugged, it's green. When I plug it in, it turns to red. So that's the only way you can know it's charging because lamps are not on when it's charging. Neither the clock shows anything, nothing. Here we have seven amps. So when it's charging, it's consuming 7.7 .7 amps from a 12 volts battery. Multiply that number, 7.7 .7 multiplied by 12.6, and that's how many watts it's consuming. The output of the charger is DC 54 volts at 1.6 amps. So you can charge your scooter from a car battery. Of course not all the way because it might consume too much power, but it's possible. So I went 4 kilometers and I never charged it yet. I mean, just one minute from the car. That's nothing, but it dropped the line. It had four lines, now it has only three. And it has a USB port also on the back side of that computer. So open that small rubber and there you have the USB. So theoretically you should be able to charge your phone or something from the battery of your scooter. So although it has a USB inside this speed meter, here's the cable, the other end is plugged into a phone. I cannot insert it there because the brake is in the way, so I'll lift it up. Oh, that's it. I just moved it by hand. Okay, so it's plugged in into the phone and it's charging the phone. The scooter itself is charging this phone through the USB cable. It's charging it at the low speed. The phone just mentioned that check the cable. It's back to four lines again. Three lines, four lines. So I didn't consume too much. Four lines again. And I went four kilometers and I charged it, let's say one minute only. 
By the way, the paint went down from the corner. That's because that corner is in touch with this. As you can see, there's a line, maybe you can see it. So, put some soft material here because otherwise one will scratch the other when you fold it down. The tire valve is identical as this one. It's identical to car tire valves, so it's like this one. It has a rubber seal inside, waterproof maybe. It's there. So here's the charger, it's dark here, but it gets pretty hot, I can barely put my hand on it. The LED is still red, and here we have 4 bars out of 5, so we need to wait until that gets green.